I'm Chris Wagner with The Gun Shop. And I'm Ben Moyer with Bank Street Guns. We're here together to host The Gun Show. This is our new show that we plan to use to showcase a lot of the fun, exciting shooting sports around Kingman. We hope to bring to you some of the resources available to us in and around the Kingman area. We're going to be doing visits to distributors like Davidson's. We're going to try to get out to some uh, manufacturers like Ruger. Uh, we're going to be doing some uh, talking about training, um, uh, safety, uh, tips and tricks. I don't know if people realize how many great resources we have in the Kingman area. We have one of the largest machine gun shoots in the nation right out in Wikiup, the Big Sandy machine gun shoot. Yes, I've been there. Oh, yeah, paradise to a gun lover. Absolutely. Uh, amazing history, good fun, machine guns, things blowing up. I don't care who you are, man or woman. And it's you, fun and, and the exciting. night shoot is fantastic. The night shoot else. is uh, just incredible to watch. They've got Tannerite blowing up. Tannerite tracers, <laughs> red and blue, or red and green tracers, streams of tracers, all over the sky. explosions, and even model airplanes flying back and forth that they right. shoot at. Uh, words don't do it justice. So we got to get out there when this thing comes around here in a few months, and uh, bring it to our friends here. Absolutely. Now, uh, hundred miles away. In January, we have the largest expo in the world. We we have shot show. Shot show. We have. Uh, I had my I brought my wife for the first time last year, and uh, we uh, she brought her little pedometer uh, for tracking how long we walked 18 miles in three days. It's uh, it's incredible. You know, um, overwhelming. It's uh, it's kind of like drinking out of a fire hose, but I think that we can probably narrow that down to some pretty cool picks. Yes. There's um, a lot of innovative product. There's a lot of the same product. We can cut that out and get down to uh, what's going to be cool for the new upcoming year. Yeah, and there's large manufacturers there, and they're all really cool, and you get to hear about Remington and Ruger and Smith & Wesson. But what's even more cool is you go downstairs, and there's these really small, brand-new manufacturers coming out with these really cool, innovative ideas. Yeah. And that's uh, so being able to do that will be a lot of fun. That's the industry cutting edge. That's going to come up in January. We've got a ways to go, a lot of fun to have in the meantime. Um, so many great shooting sports around here. Uh, we were talking earlier about the, the Scholastic Trap program that's yes. going on for the kids. Uh, there's also a, a high school pistol team. And uh, man, I can't imagine if that had been around when I was in school here. Yeah, when you go down to the Sportsman Club, uh, I'm new to Kingman here, and the first time I went down there, I never expected to find a full trap range, skeet, and sporting clays, as well as 1,000-yard, 200-yard, um, and all the pistol uh, shooting out there. It's just a great resource for the kids, and it's also a great resource for the rest of the people. Got to plug them a little bit more, uh, $65 annual family memberships if yep. you're a senior. I think it's $35. Yeah, Impressive. It, it, the prices are incredible. I bought a lifetime membership. It's only $500. Bought one for my wife, too. So it's a, it's a great way to, um, to get out and shoot. And speaking of range, just... <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got a pretty dang nice range, too. Yes. We're uh, going I, I, to be spending some time in there a little bit later. I, I, we can't talk about guns without shooting them. That's so I'm right. looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you're new to town. You are the new guy. There's been a lot of talk about that. Who's this guy that bought... Bank Street Guns. Where are you from? Well, I'm originally from uh, the St. Paul, Minneapolis area. Um, uh, if everybody knows that's in Minnesota. <laughs> and if you hear my accent, it's Minnesota. <laughs> but uh, um, I ran a computer company for a number of years, uh, about 15, 16 years, and uh, sold it to my largest competitor and uh, wanted to retire somewhere warm. And I picked Kingman um, because of the beautiful mountains here. And uh, when I realized that I also probably wanted to retire a little sooner, and, but I didn't have the money to do it, so I thought, well, I'll just see if there's any businesses for sale in the you're, area. Uh, now, you're, you're once retired, and you're, how old are you? You're in your early 42. 40s. All right, that's, uh, <laughs> congratulations on <laughs> Thank that. Thank you. Now, for retiring, uh, you, you seem pretty busy. Yeah, well, you know, if, once you get used to working hard, uh, it's hard not to uh, just to sit back and relax. So... Um, didn't take me long. I think I was only uh, only uh, off of work for about a year and had to get right back into it. So, <laughs> bought the gun shop and well, the gun sh my gun shop, <laughs> Bank Street Guns, not the gun shop. And now, now you hit on why I'm called the gun shop. Absolutely, it, it's it's beautiful. It frustrated uh, me when I came to town. <laughs> it's beautiful confusion. But I'll tell you what. Whenever they call me looking for you guys, we give them the right number. Yes. All right. I, uh, well, I learned that quickly. I was coming into town that uh, that um, it wasn't uh, the competition was good, 
and you're a great guy and you have a great shop here and I, um, I, I would entrust my customers coming over here when I don't have the supplies that they need and I can send them over here and I know you've done the same for me. So that this is quite a compliment. You know, Daryl did good work with that shop. Um, I remember being a customer going in there from day one. He inspired me. You know, he's, uh, he's right around the corner from, from my place of business at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in there all the time. He used to do this cool raffle. You'd walk in and you, you uh, get a ticket for coming in. I even stole that idea from him for a while. <laughs> yeah, he said that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I totally did. Um, it was fun. And, and uh, it, it, there, there it goes, the fun. You're going to hear fun a lot yep. out of me. You know, um, used to go in there all the time. And uh, it, it was nice when I, when I finally decided to... to Go into business here, talk with him about it, being, a, being a, a guy that I considered a friend. He wasn't just a guy that ran the gun shop I hang out in. He was a friend and he had that atmosphere. Tell okay. me a little bit about uh, the gun shop and how you got it started. Well, uh, something I've always wanted to do. When I was a kid, I, I had these, these wild aspirations that I wanted a gun shop. I was so enamored with firearms, a big part of my family, big part of our recreation. And uh, for whatever reason, I, I was I was kind of uh, distracted by the idea of being a a, a, a business owner, mm -hmm. you know. I, I had I had delusions of grandeur. I thought this was going to be a, a cakewalk, right? <laughs> uh, not the case, but it's a whole lot of fun. It's as fun as I had ever hoped. So, uh, when when the time came that that I could pursue this, I, I jumped into it. It was uh, for anybody that remembers us when when we were small. Wasn't much of a start, you know. We had a few guns on the wall, and, and uh, the cases were mostly empty, and it looked like a dance floor. We didn't even have our, our cabinets out in the front. Very humble beginnings, but mm -hmm. um, it took a little time. People slowly started to catch on with uh, with, with my hopes for what it could be, and a lot of help from a lot of friends, um, a lot of support from a lot of great customers. We've built it into a gun shop. Yeah, it sounds like those beginnings were very similar to Daryl's uh, early beginnings with him starting the gun shop. I didn't have to do all of those things. <laughs> I was able to just come in and buy it, um, which was nice. But uh, know what you're talking about because I did have to start my own business and start it from the ground up. And in selling my business, I was able to just buy something that somebody else worked very hard to build. Yeah, well, one more thing I always wanted to find out is what was the, what was the key moment in your childhood or young adult life when you first shot your first gun and said, I love this. I yeah. just have, this is like the thing I want to do. I, I know that I was shooting from the time I could walk. I, I've seen pictures of, uh, you know, dad holding me with, with the gun, helping me shoot and all. But the, uh, the real pivotal moment where it came uh, to me from, uh, from the place of watching somebody else do it and be excited mm -hmm. about it to me being excited was uh, my eighth birthday. My father picked up this cool little 1022, you know, one of the old walnut stocks, and he trims it all down, you know, whittles it down, and, and uh, makes this perfect miniature out of it. As I'm sleeping at night, he's working on this thing. That's cool. Gives it to me my eighth birthday. I'm, I'm born in early October, so here's squirrel season. So mm -hmm. uh, up we go to the Wallapies, just a little bit shy of the, the first park up there, and uh, we start walking out there, and, and uh, here I am, noisy tromping through the forest. Uh, he had to have great patience on this. Um, asking all kinds of questions as he's saying, okay, you got to be quiet now. You know, the squirrels are going to come out when you're quiet. And we sit down and for long down come the squirrels. And I, I, I took two squirrels out of the wall of pies that day. Um, a small thing. And, and uh, what's funny is, is you'll actually see him on the, on the wall right over here. He got those, those things taxidermied mounted <laughs> all those years ago. Wow. And uh, surprised me again with them when he brought them home and there were my squirrels. So uh, wow. still in the gun shop to this day. And I, I get a kick out of when folks notice that. And around all the cool trophies, they go, squirrels, why squirrels? And I say, you know, <laughs> let me tell you, those squirrels started it all. <laughs> That's very cool. So, um, how about you? Tell me, tell me, how'd you, how'd you get into it? Well, uh, it was more of a love of the outdoors first. Um, I was five years old my, when my father put me up on his shoulders and hooked me in the woods hunting with them. And my grandfather was with, and we ended up getting lost. <laughs> and I was five and I remember this very clearly and they were arguing back and forth which one was right and they spun around in this swamp for until about 10 o'clock at night and they finally found their way out because somebody's porch light was on and we we walked up to that house and they knocked on the door and both my grandfather and my dad were sheepishly kind of admitting that they got lost and had to call my mom to come pick them pick them up from their lost hunting trip Indeed. we were seven miles away from the where the car was <laughs> uh, so that's but, quite an adventure 
but that was it was the outdoors it was being outside and just learning about all that stuff and i just uh that that stuck with me and so i i loved the outdoors but more recently um what got me really into guns was a really good friend of mine took me for the first time took me duck hunting and he handed me a shotgun and I sat there in the boat and I shot, 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 and I never hit anything. But I just fell in love with the fact that I was, uh, I was out there shooting. And then when I hit my first duck, I was really excited and, uh, and it just started up. And that was only six or seven years ago. So it's, I haven't been in guns real long, but um, I got the fever and uh, I haven't looked back since. You know, the, bought my uh... first Benelli. And then I bought another Benelli, so I just uh, really uh, The addiction really takes it. you quick. Absolutely, yeah. All right, we're going to break for a commercial. Stay with us. After just a brief word from our sponsors, we're going to be right back to talk about some really cool stuff here. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Welcome back. I'm Ben Moyer with Bank Street Guns. And I'm Chris Wagner with The Gun Shop. Now, we haven't talked about guns yet today, and we can't have a gun show without guns. I know you brought something cool to, to show me, and, and uh, this is one of your, well, this is today's pick. Show yes, me what is. you got. Well, I have the Sig Sauer P238. It's the SAS model with the sanded edges. Now, you told me today what that actually stood for. <laughs> what was that again? Uh, SAS, if I may, stands for SIG Anti-Snag. And uh, as you already know, but since it's in my hands now, I get to talk about this cool uh, rounded edges that you'll see on here make it uh, just super easy to, to holster, unholster pocket. And yeah, all. It's, uh, it's one of the reasons I chose it is because of that <laughs> uh, SAS model. It's, it's exactly like you said. The other reason I chose the, um, the SIG P238 is it's the compact size. Um, I can carry it inside the waistband, I can put it in my pocket, I can carry it outside. Uh, it's a great uh, little 9mm um, gun. Um, it's going to shoot my personal protection ammo, it's going to shoot my ball ammo. And one of the things I was surprised about this gun is how accurate this gun is. Um, I was shooting it out, I was shooting it last uh, night. I was just going to ask you, how accurate is this yeah, gun? I was shooting it last night and <laughs> I was about, um, I would say, uh, 20 yards or so, maybe 15, 20 yards. And I was able to shoot about a two inch group um, without any effort um, in shooting this gun. And I don't even consider myself a, a, you know, a marksman of any kind. That's, uh, so, that's something you'd expect out of a full size firearm. Right, I, I'm, that's what I shoot in my 45. That's what I shoot out of my other not full size nines. I was not expecting to hit a group that size with this gun. So very nice gun. And uh, the other thing that I really like about it is it's a, it's a mini 1911 or a baby 1911 and the takedown is actually much easier than 1911. 1911s tend to scare people and all this intricate parts. The takedown on this is just really simple. Um, basically what you're going to do is you're going to pull this back. Uh, actually we're going to clear this gun. Is that clear? <laughs> you have a clear chamber. All right. Thank you. We're going to pull this back and I just pull it back with this thumb. And of course the camera can't see this, but there's actually a little divot right there and you just push on this pin and it pops right out and the gun comes right apart now, uh, and it's really easy to One thing I'm seeing different than the 1911 is we don't have that, that barrel lug at the end to have to worry about and uh, a spring no. that's going to come shooting out if you're not holding it just and, right. And uh, even on some of the other uh, smaller 1911s, you got to have a special tool or a paper clip to put in there. This can all be done with just two hands. It takes apart real quick and it's very quick to put back together. So it's just a nice gun. One of the things that you were mentioning earlier today about this gun, and I am in 100% agreement, is that this gun is designed to be carried cocked and locked, is the term that's used. Yeah, so the hammer right. back on safe, and that's, that's how it's designed to be holstered. We see, uh, we see a lot of people in looking at this gun here, and it's, it, it's made the little uh, 238, 380, uh, just, a, just a slight miniature of this. Very attractive gun. First off, because SIG realized a long time ago, something a lot of other companies don't seem to get, and that's that a gun can be pretty too. Mm -hmm. You can have a great looking gun as well as functional. Absolutely. SIG's yeah, nailing it. There, there's, uh, 
my gosh, there's, there's 15 different versions of these. It'll, it'll suit anybody's personality. So it appeals to a wide variety of folks, but then I get people that want to stick it in their pocket, and they're a little bit alarmed by the cocked and locked carry. Right. Even though this has been around now since World War I, it's, it's the idea that the hammer's back, it's less safe. Um, something I try to tell everybody on that is, you're going to be hard pressed to get this thing retrieved, off safety, Correct. cocked as, as needed, and all. It's, it's a little bit too much to, to ask of yourself right. in that stressed situation, now, but as long as you're willing to carry it cocked and locked like you're doing, right. it's a great gun. Now we're not suggesting that you take this gun in a cocked and locked situation and stick it directly in your pocket. There are holsters out there that will protect the trigger exactly. so that it doesn't accidentally go off. Now, I see that you've also brought a gun today. Uh, uh, I got one of my favorites. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's talk about it. What do you have there? Let's talk a bit about the Remington Versamax. Now, uh, lot of, always a lot of interest in uh, the working man style shotguns. You know, the, the semi-autos, the, the affordable stuff. This is a little on the higher end of that range. But it's so been when a, you say higher end, are you saying Benelli high end? or are you it's, saying, uh, it's approaching uh, it. Okay. Price wise, it's All approaching right. it. Quality wise, it's there. It has arrived. Now, for so long, Remington made beautiful guns with the 1100s, the 1187s. They were great guns, but they were also dated to a point. And Benelli was just, just surpassing them. There was no question about it. They were, they were owning the three-gun scene. Mm -hmm. uh, Remington needed to do something, and it, it, they did it, and here it is. This, uh, this guy here in the Versamax is, is the uh, Versamax Competition Tactical. This is their three-gun. They've also made a variety of the Versamaxes in the water fowlers and... Um, the uh, toned back tactical looks a little more like something you'd see the police with uh, instead of the, the green and the carbon fiber, black, aluminum. Um, but they all share something in common. They share a, a, a new action that they came out with to accommodate the three and a half inch mag shells. In the past, you have an 1187 chamber in three and a half inch. You can shoot your two and three quarter and your three inch pretty well, but then you're going to be changing the piston around, actually taking your gun apart and changing a little bit in there so that you can shoot your three and a half or vice versa. If you don't change it up right, your ammo may not feed proper. They have fixed that problem with this, with the new porting system, runs flawless. 60% um, recoil reduction, it's, uh, and that's where it's keeping up with the Benelli. Benelli wow. was the first one to really yeah. deliver that smooth, smooth feel, and uh, these guys are nailing it well. So when you talk about waterfall with this gun, uh, one of the things that I've liked with my Benelli is the fact that if I see a goose coming by, I can change out my three inch for a three and a half inch shell really, really quick. Uh, you were talking about that earlier. Tell me a little bit more how you do that with this gun. The, the gas system on this, instead of having one big port accommodating all shells down in the end, it, it's got a, a, a stepped porting system so that when you slide in your two and three quarter shell, and that's two and three quarter inches long before it opens up, you're gonna leave all of your ports open because you've got a, a shell with less pressure, less oomph to get that gun working. Mm -hmm. When you slide in your, your three inch, it's gonna cover some of those ports, your three and a half inch even more, limiting the gas that's traveling through because you've got so much more power in that shell. So the gun is automatically adjusting itself to what shell's in it. In the tube, you can have your two and three quarter, three, three and a half, and bang them out one, two, three, wow. just as smooth as butter. Now, um, you're a Benelli shooter, mm -hmm. have, have a feel of that. Wow, and, that uh, is really nice. And that comes um, up really nice as well. Maybe a touch heavier. It Not is sure a little heavier, but you got a lot of a uh, lot of extended tube out there. Ten rounds on that one. That is their ten round model. I think my Benelli's only five. <laughs> well, it, either one's going to get the job done. Right. We, we might have to uh, we might have to go run these and, and decide. I think that sounds like another show coming up. That sounds good. Now, um, every week, I want to bring everybody a tip of the week. Now. Um, this can be from, from cleaning the gun, uh, upkeeping, how to buy ammo, how to look for used guns, what to look for. I, I want to talk about something very near and dear to me and probably you. We got folks that come in here wanting to share their favorite gun with us. Maybe yep. they want to talk about it, learn about it. Maybe I, they, I know exactly where maybe you're going to Maybe they want to sell it. <laughs> or sometimes they just get really excited when they're here and talking about guns, and the unthinkable happens, out comes the gun out of the, out of the holster. Happens way too and, much. And uh, it's scary. I don't think anybody's ever out to get us, but through an, an accident, through negligence, yeah, that, that, that something bad is going to happen one of these days. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, how you like people that come into the store with a firearm they're going to present to you. Yes. Um, thinking ahead clearing it ahead. Now, uh, let, let's demo with this guy here. Unfortunately, they don't often come in open. 
The, I, uh, I, about, only about 5% of the time do guns actually come into my store with the actions open. It would just be great if customers, when they come into the store, come in with an unloaded gun. I'd like to see them without the magazine, I, and I'd like to see that action open and locked. And when they're walking in, pointing it in a nice, safe direction. Now, that could be cased, which is then it's safe. Um, you could have it pointing down to the ground, but carrying it in a way that doesn't look like you have the gun in your hand to shoot it. Don't like to see this when people are showing me a gun. I don't care if it's safe or not because their hand is on the gun. I like to see it where they're holding on to it in a way that's safe, but it's obvious that they're bringing me to show me the gun, not Indeed. to uh, not to use the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. It's, um, it, it's easy to get lax. It's easy to take things for granted. and, and uh, you know, a lot of us, after handling them for a lifetime, can can make that mistake that in a moment can leave you with a big regret. Right. Um, I like that. Now, to clarify, I don't mind if people conceal carry in my shop, and I kind of expect that somebody around here is no. probably conceal carry. As a gun shop owner, we want to sell guns. And I'll we want to see people carry. You're carrying. Absolutely. So, so uh, it's not a problem for somebody to walk into the store with a gun. Just leave the just leave carry the gun, gun in the holster. Right. You if you're going it. to buy a, a, a magazine for that gun, if you're going to uh, a if you're looking a holster, bring the gun in out of the holster with it cleared. Action open magazine yeah. out of the uh, out of the gun. Yeah. Um, that's just uh, will, uh, that's the best way. I to will do say that that, that is uh, you've said it perfect. That is the way to avoid the worst time you'll ever have in a gun shop when you come in unsafe, even perceived as unsafe by an owner, not necessarily even you or me, any of them. You're right. going to get uh, maybe a little bit of rough treatment. And we have a lot of customers out there that are concerned for us. And we would not want a customer to mistake somebody pulling out a gun to show it to us in a kind way as a, yeah. as a, uh, as a gesture of, uh, of violence. You got it. So uh, by all means, I would encourage anybody, bring them in. Let's talk about them. Let's learn about them. Bring them in nice and safe, respectful. Remember those things that you learned early on in, in, your, in your shooting life. Uh, always treat them as they're loaded. And don't, don't forget the basics. We have to practice them every day to make sure we're on it. And, uh, we appreciate it when everybody else does too. Well, thanks, Chris, for bringing that up. We'll be right back. Now it's time for the duel we promised you. Um, can't have two competing gun shop owners uh, agreeing on everything, can we? Uh, well, what's competition without competition? <laughs> That's right. So today we're going to talk about our personal choice for home defense. And uh, customers are always coming in asking us, well, what, you, what should you use for home defense? So I figured that was a good topic for, uh, for our duel. So let's start so off I mean, with you. All right. What's your choice my, of home defense? My choice of home defense. Um, if you only had one gun, one what gun. would you choose? I, I'm going to go with this one, and, and this, this may not be a, a, the most popular of decisions. I'm going to go with my concealed carry. The gun that, that stays on my hip every day, everywhere I go, I think that's going to be my best choice and, and my, my most natural grab if something bad were happening in, in my home at night, that situation that everybody fears. So over to, to one spot in my home that, that, that I always keep it in, um, keeping in mind that, you know, agreements I've made with my wife, don't, don't move it, don't unload it, here's the way, here's where this is, I want to be able to grab it in a, in a, um, well, a, a certain state and count on that. I'm going to grab for, in, in, in my case, I carry a, an FN day to day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab for that FN, and I can maneuver this thing in my house easily, compact. It's something I can control well, tuck away if needed. And uh, all around, it is the most comfortable gun in my hand. After all, it's the one that I carry every day. Um, my grab is going to be for my handgun. Okay. Now, uh, a lot of customers disagree with me on this. They like the shotguns. Yep, and I'm one uh, of them. <laughs> all right, tell me, tell me about your shotgun. All right, this is my pump action shotgun. And the reason I like the shotgun is um, it can be loaded, it's ready to go, just like your gun, so that's, it can be sitting next to the bed. And uh, the thing that I like about it, though, is I'm concerned as a gun shop owner that I don't have the over penetration and I have ammunition or projectiles exiting my house. And I just don't need a lawsuit. And uh, and if I want to be able to confidently pull the trigger on a perpetrator in my house, I don't want that uh, the the um, the ammunition going where it shouldn't go. And so I tell use me about buckshot. Your, tell me and about your ammunition. Buckshot right. and birdshot. I mix them up. Right. And 
you know, I get up, I'm pretty sleepy. Um, I don't want to have to be worried about aiming the gun. I'm just going to point it in the direction and pull the trigger if I, if I need to. I uh, got to concede a little bit on there. I like that you said birdshot. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of birdshot in a defensive shotgun. It spreads fast. It does a lot of damage. It yep. doesn't overpenetrate. Um, definitely something I'm going to have to be more mindful of about my, my carry gun. I got a big heavy projectile going out there that might. And, um, but I have to kind of almost agree with you a little bit on the handgun because you know what? I'm always practicing with my concealed carry and I kind of have to admit I'm not practicing as much as the, with the shotgun. So I, I'm going to have to kind of maybe think about that as well. Huh. Thanks for being with us today on The Gun Show. I'm Chris Wagner with The Gun Shop. And I'm Ben Moyer with Bank Street Guns. Till next time, be safe and have fun. Um.